I was about 12 probably when my mother was asking me to carry a corpse of a dead baby in my hands to slowly walking together with the mourners from the house of the family to a cemetery in our village. It was sad, but it was beautiful solemn funeral rite for Muslim people in my village, spontaneously honest. Most women from my mother's age wearing their kind pati, you know, pati fabric under their black kabaya, while my entire body together with poor dead baby, except my head, was fully covered by a fresh new design of patik fabric. I still recognize a smell of a burnt wax, very good, mixed with blended strong smells of trio flowers of kananga, jasmine and roses. Processions to the cemetery was beautiful, a lot of colorful umbrellas moving along the village paths. Middle-aged men, tall and big, covering me with an artistic paper umbrella during procession. No feeling of anxiety or horrified. Only a few family members shed a tear. Metaphorically, we Austronesians take death as a source of our life. Maybe because we all fear death. We would not actually, but we do not look at it as a taboo. We speak in many forms of expressions as language for death, rather than hiding it. Rejections on the burial of the bodies of terrorists in Surabaya by few villagers moved me, inspired me to prepare the coffins I imagine. This was a reason for early approaches on the series of Mono Human Being, where my first productions of six coffins in cocoons form I called Empty Signifier number 13. So metamorphosis was the keyword to begin with. A cocoon is a form full of fantasy where you put a lot of hopes. We all happy with this metamorphosis. As an artist living in Indonesia, it has never been too late to learn and unlearn from its cultural condition of post-coloniality. But who is behind that importance of sharing knowledge? Why do we always have to share knowledge only? The local modernity is probably in the most irrelevant Indonesian context of post-coloniality. Since modernization in Indonesia intentionally creates tension between tradition and modernity. We are rich of various kinds of traditions, including beliefs and religion, and not all of them are on the same path to things. It is tensional and very much dynamic. For me, culture is always on the move. Let me show you my hairpiece as one of my fond objects in my work. 25 years ago, a particular style of hairpiece in Java spoke strongly different than nowadays in my hometown, Yogyakarta. It speaks also different when you put in another culture context of a different geographical area. It is almost tricky, but it is not when you intensively stick to exploring all representation through one single object, you seem to be less active in terms of producing something. No matter how you try to always be critical in giving new meaning on that particular existing product, but when you fail, you are not moving far than repeating the idea of iconization. I 
I was obsessed by the idea of introversion from the Japanese perspective of culture. I thought that by working on Kondi, this particular Japanese hair pieces will speak up. Now you will imagine from the perspective of audience who start to iconize me as a Kondi artist. It just happens and I cannot prevent it. What I have to do is keeping open and arbitrary the relation between the use of found object and the idea. I do not want myself trapped in iconizing my own work. My admiration on the local craft is the idea of survival sustainability that is embodied within the scene of local craft. In an early stadium of most craft as an activity, from the perspective of my personal observation, it is very much to do with a kind of alternative solution of what you can do with a leftover material, often involving the idea of recycling. It also supports the notion of learning and unlearning of the making something. However, the ability to sum on the life force and creativity sustains desire is something that I am trying to show you here. I do not have an intention to only sharpen my individual skill. Before I end up this speech, I would love to leave a trial of how I myself looking at the relation between my personal interest and the global world of globalization. The fact is that I do not want to be an iconic artist, that is for sure. I do care of my practicing myself as artist because that is my life. I'm enjoying my life and doing a lot of art and art activism. These two things seem to be an interesting blending by nature. Although my concerns is always alert how to separate these two and post them countering to each other. This is importantly necessary for me. Lots of art projects I did radiate this ambiguity. Just to mention the Setoji Triennial in 2019 at Ibukijima Island in Japan. We decided to focus on an almost forgotten talisman, a fully respected talisman by Japanese fishermen. And so the inhabitants of the island of Ibukijima, Setoji Islands, Japan. It is often set as a holding belief for fishing communities in Japan to always be optimistic about getting fish in the sea without being obstructed by the danger of accident at sea. Funadama-san is a fictional spirit outside their marine technology awareness, engaging subconscious active participation within the broad cultural framework is my interest, a strong reason for us. Our most inspiring concern in the Pasang project for Setoji Triennial 2019. We then included another element of forgotten subconscious expressions related to this belief. It is a fisherman hymn that older generation who are still living cannot sing it anymore. The echo of this old hymn is slowly thrown out by the roar of the modern ship's engines. I would rather call most of my art projects are trembling experiences of translocality rather than internationalism. Internationalism has never been my interest. To speak it up 
in artworks. It often stays as number two crucial issues to discuss about among the art activists. Find out ways to intervene the policies and change them without necessarily creating a vulgar artworks. Mm-hmm.